in your only in your imagination could you imagine how that would be. All right. Just for the moment, please come and stand. I know you're all we everybody went down and you feel great and we're looking for this, but just for the moment, please come and stand. And and did you lift yourself away from the floor as you stood, or did you have to press yourself upwards? Did you have to come up against the gravity? Yeah. Yeah. Or did you, like my bobcat, did you just lift yourself from the floor? Yeah. Now, again, these are interesting questions. So as you're standing there, are you, are you experiencing yourself as being in gravity? Or are you experience yourself in the other paradigm, as if as if the ground forces are inviting you to lift away from your away from the floor? And can you make this distinction within yourself? This very subtle distinction. It is a microsecond. Can you make? Can you shift back and forth in this microsecond? It, it, you might fall less than a millimeter. It's like a compressive falling into yourself when gravity has you. And you pay attention. And you'll sense a change in the tone because it has to stabilize you. And that's profoundly different than the tone that you experience when the ground force or this other paradigm, it's as if you're lifting away from yourself. And again, it's tiny. It doesn't, it, it's not effort. As soon as it becomes effort, it means that you've taken on into the phasic musculature to do something, to produce something. It's simply almost like just quietly, if, if there could be a millimeter of airspace between each vertebra, between each joint, and you just simply All right, so just notice how you find yourself. And of course, you can notice the shift in your attitude as you go from one to the other. Viktor Frankl has a series of wonderful quotes about that. Maybe I can remember them. OK, please come and lie on your back. Now. As you went to the floor, was there a moment that you fell? Where you relied on the floor to catch you? Did you go to the floor in such a way that you continued to lift yourself away from the floor? These are, these are interesting questions. Because it's in these questions that we're dealing with the essence of reversibility. We have the idea of reversibility, but the actual essence of reversibility. Yeah. All right, please bend your knees and bring your feet to standing. And watch, even as you bring your feet to standing, and as your foot comes to standing, watch at the last moment, who has just a micro, you're a millimeter above the floor, Find out whether your foot falls to the floor with the expectation that it's going to catch you. Or did you touch the floor in such a way it's as if you're able to lift yourself away from the floor? How would you place your foot on the floor so that it would be as easy for you to lift your leg as it would be to lift your pelvis? as if it was as easy to lengthen your leg and bring it back to standing. How would you rest your foot on the floor with that potential? Good. Now please take a moment and begin to lift your pelvis so that you can sense the weight, the initial weight of your pelvis. And notice, and notice for yourself your first, again, the first input, the first impulse. And you find out whether you have to 
push against the floor, whether you increase your weight into the floor. But give yourself a sense of the weight of your pelvis. So you can explore how it is to either press and lift or lift. And by now you can make the distinction that pressing must involve your somehow going towards your feet. And lifting relies on the way that your arches, the way your foot, the structure of your foot is such that you don't have to increase the pressure, increase the weight into the floor. It's like the arches are so well established that when you engage the musculature, it provides you the ability to move. Is this is this process of ATM becoming, is it able, are you able to understand it more of, as a practice? Yeah, this ability to make these distinctions? All right, please now lengthen your left leg, leave your right foot standing. And please begin to lift the inner edge of your right foot. And what does it mean to lift your inner edge of your right foot? It means to lift the inner edge of your right foot in such a way that your heel and the metatarsal head of the big toe stay on the floor. So it's not to roll your foot to the side. It's to make this little movement of lifting the medial arch. Your big toe stays on the floor. Your heel stays on the floor. And it becomes a question, how can you lift the inner edge of your foot? And you can play with this in multiple ways. Some people lift the inner edge of their foot by curling their toes underneath themselves. Other people do something to roll their foot. So lift the inner edge of your foot a few times. And notice as you lift the inner edge of your foot, your impression of how your foot moves under, under your lower leg. As you lift the inner edge of your foot, what's the sensation that you have of your lower leg under your knee? How does this lifting of your inner edge of your foot travel into your hip joint? And as you lift the inner edge of your foot, you begin to notice whether it increases your sense of length or not. So please come up and sit for a moment. And you can sit with your legs any way you want to, but so that your right foot is still standing. And then please, with your thumb behind, come behind the top of the fibula, and with your two fingers or three or four fingers, find the front of the fibula. Yeah. So if I'm sitting here, I just palpate. I can find, we're going to find and take some time to do some palpation. But behind the fibula and finding the front of the fibula, it means to begin to locate for yourself this bone. It's hard to trace. You can find the, the lower portion of it and you can find the top of it. Where will you find it? Yeah. So your fingers are behind and 
to the very front. You can see, look, just for the moment, your knee's bent, isn't it? Yeah. So with your knee bent, you can feel the condyle of the femur. It's exposed. You can travel your finger along your patella to come down until you can find the top of the tibial plateau. You can begin to seek the top of the tibial plateau. So now you look to see, if I have the tibial plateau here, and I can trace the tibial plateau along, the fibula must be just below. Yeah. So when you find this, the fibula, will you please now, once again, listen, listen with your fingers as you lift the inner edge of your foot. What movement does the fibula make? As you lift the inner edge of your foot, what's the movement that the fibula makes? What direction does it move? In what direction? So it, it moves up. She says it does what? It rotates back. So you have the sense that it rotates actually back and up a little bit. For some of you, others can make this movement actually and actually have the fibula go the other way. Yeah, it's a funny thing. So lift the inner edge of your foot and listen to the movement of the fibula. That's it. Hmm? Say it again. Yeah, you, if, if I go, if I take my foot, if I take my foot the other way, I can actually make the movement go with the, I've lifted the inner edge of my foot. I've lifted it powerfully, but I've actually lifted in such a way that my leg is spiraling that way. My lower leg is spiraling counterclockwise. If I, if I place a clock on top of my, of the tibial plateau, yes, and I look down from the top, and then I, as I make this movement of lifting my inner edge of my foot and making the movement of the, of the fibula, what direction is the tibial pla plateau moving? Is it moving clockwise or is it moving anti-clockwise? Yeah. We'll wait and see. See, that's that's a funny question, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Leave it and rest for a moment. And please come back. It's not a long rest, but it's, it's a little rest. And now, will you hold the fibula in such a way that as you hold the fibula, you invite the fibula, you move the fibula in such a way that it invites the inner edge of your foot to lift. Now, again, we're only dealing with millimeters here. But how could, I, how could I make this movement in such a way that as I make this movement, as I invite this to come, in what direction? What direction will I, will, I, will I make this movement in such a way that as this moves, that it will invite the arch to lift? What movement would that be? Huh? Back and up. Yeah. So we invite the movement in such a way that you can sense, you can actually hold the fibula in such a way that you invite, that you give the movement and it's like you're, like a stick or something, it's like you're pulling the inner arch to lift a little bit. Yeah. 
and then rotate the fibula down and back up and down and back up so that you can raise and lower the inner edge of your foot. You can see it's a small movement to raise and lower the inner edge of your foot. It's not a large movement, especially if you're going to leave the head of the, of the large toe, the first toe, on the ground. And it's an interesting question. In what way, then, is the heel moving? In what way is the ankle moving? OK, now for a moment, please leave that. And now, with your knee bent, take your fingers on each side of the patella and come down and find the top of the tibial plateau. And then place your hand, your right hand, from the outside just below the tibial plateau. And make this movement, this clockwise movement, with the tibial plateau that begins to lift the inner edge of your foot. And then alternate. Once lift the inner edge of your foot so the tibial plateau rotates clockwise, and then once hold the tibial plateau in such a way that it lifts the inner edge of your foot. You're working way too hard, man. <laughs> yeah. But that's okay. You got time. <laughs> you didn't know it before this, and so. <laughs> well. At what point in your life did you have to get it right the first time? How, let's see, let's see. I, let's see, I learned that skill really early. <laughs> Anybody else learn that skill early on in life? <laughs> that you were rewarded for getting it right the first time? <laughs> All right. So now lift the inner edge of your foot and rotate the tibial plateau clockwise. Rotate the tibial plateau clockwise and lift the inner edge of your foot. Go back then to the fibula. Organize the fibula to lift the inner edge of your foot. Lift the inner edge of your foot and move the fibula. Go back and forth. And then think of the plateau and the fibula both working together so that you can sense the lower leg in the relationship to this And then take a moment and come down and touch the two bones of your ankle, the outside and then the lower part of the tibia, and touch and just hold them as you lift the inner edge of your foot. How does your ankle rotate over the top of your foot? Your foot actually is rotating underneath your ankle, isn't it? It's making a small movement under your ankle. But you're lifting the inner edge of your foot. And you're just listening to what the lower end of your leg makes, the movement your leg makes. Yeah. Now simply lift the inner edge of your foot once or twice and just notice if your sensitivity has in any way change to the possibility. And please come and lie on your back and lift the inner edge of your foot. Inside. Yes. Yes. Not yet. Not yet. You might have done this something like this in class before. Have you done a lesson like this before in class? I don't know. I teach things in various ways. 
Now please lengthen your legs and experience the difference between your right leg and your left. How, and it's not just your experience of your, your legs, but please notice the experience of your legs that you have in your hands. This triangulation that you have between your legs touching your hands and your hands touching your legs and the way that you've activated the movement. In one way, you activate the movement with your hands to lift your arch, the inner arch. And the other way is you lift the inner arch in such a way that you can sense the activation in your hands. You've been triangulating your experience. And so pay attention to this connection that you sense between your hands through yourself and into your, into your right leg. And notice the difference in the way that you experience your right leg and your left. Your hands relative to your right leg, this, this latent way of knowing and sensing yourself. Now please bend your knees and bring your left foot to standing. Just only, excuse me, just bring your left foot to standing and will you please explore for a moment lifting the inner edge of your left foot. And again, notice the very first movements, the earliest movements as to the, the degree to which you know this foot. This may be more familiar for you and more able, you may be more able to access it than the right, or it may be less accessible. You might have to go through a few movements to sort of locate, even find. What does it mean to lift the inner edge of your foot in such a way that you leave the metatarsal head and your heel on the ground? In what way will your lower leg spiral now? If you were looking down from the tibial plateau, down through your ankle, which direction are you spiraling your leg? And when you have your first sense of this, please come up and sit and make the same experiment in your own time of finding the fibula, finding the behind the fibula in the front of the fibula and making the movement of lifting the inner edge of your foot and sensing the direction that your fibula moves. Now it's really quite interesting because some of you may find that the fibula actually wants to go clockwise in both legs or counterclockwise in both legs. They may not spiral in opposite directions. Yeah, so you just notice and make sure you get it right, of course. <laughs> okay, I'm being obnoxious. And then make the movement of finding, palpating along your kneecap and finding the, the bottom of the femoral condyles, the way that they are in front, and then finding the top of the tibial plateau and then resting your hand below the tibial plateau and making the movement so that you can sense the top of the tibia, the rotation that it makes so that you can, again, acquaint yourself with these relationships of how the, the tibial plateau can glide under the femoral condyles. So that it's not theory, it's something that you can actually sense. It's one of the things that we do is, is that not only do we learn to look at the joints and to see what potential they have, but we discover the potential they have from our own internal kinesthetic experience. It's not reading Kapanjis. Yeah. We're, we're reading our own Kapanjis. Kapanjis did a series of wonderful, wonderful books on all the, all the potentials of the joints. So you make it so that you can sense your lower leg, the way that the your foot spirals underneath your lower leg, the way that that spiral lifts and comes into the tibia, the tibial plateau, the way that the movement comes into the, to the fibula.
please lie on your back. Please lift the inner edge of your right foot, so you bend your knees and stand your feet. Actually, lift the inner edge of your left foot before the right one, just for a moment, so that you can refer now. You, again, you can sense your hands touching your leg, the latent sense of your hands knowing the experience of touching your leg, the latent sense of your leg moving in such a way that you can sense your hands, you can engage the movement from your hands, you can engage the movement from your foot. And this leads to a kind of linking, a kind of knowing, a kind of experiencing of yourself. It's a way in which something becomes highlighted and begins to come out, becomes available to you. Now please lift the inner edge of both feet. Bend your knees and stand your feet and lift the inner edge of both feet. It means for you, you notice, it may not be that you spiral one going one way and one going the other. It's most interesting for me over the years that the people that don't spiral, that they both spiral both the same way. In my experience, almost invariably, there's been a back injury involved. And then alternate, lift one, and notice the availability and the and the sense of knowing, and then lift the other. And just for the moment, as you're lifting the inner edge of your foot, will you please lift your pelvis? Will you notice the effect that it has on the beginning of the lifting? Because this lifting of the inner edge of the foot invites something to come away from the floor. You're lifting the inner edge of your foot away from the floor. It invites something to come through and up and into your leg. Just Watch and sense for yourself the initial movement of lifting your pelvis now. Leave it and rest for a moment. You might notice as you were lifting the inner edge of your foot and lifting your pelvis, whether you had to increase the weight of your foot on the floor or whether it provided a different basis for lifting. Now please stand your right foot and lift the outer edge of your foot the outer edge of your foot. It means that you lift in such a way that the heel and the metatarsal head of the, of the little toe are lifted away from the floor, which is a different spiral. The outer edge of your foot and the little, the metatarsal head of the little toe and the heel stay on the floor. The heel and the, and the metatarsal head of the little toe stay on the floor. Again, it must be a tiny movement. You're not lifting the metatarsal head away from the floor, nor the heel. So it's a tiny, tiny movement. And then after you've made the first movement, come up and sit and hold the fibula and make the movement so that you can sense what the fibula does. It 
So as you lift the outer edge of the foot, in what direction do you sense the fibula moving? In what direction do you sense the tibial plateau moving? In what direction do you sense the ankles moving? And how does the pressure change across the floor with your foot? In what direction would you move the, the fibula to lift the outer edge of the foot? What direction would you turn the tibia to lift the outer edge of the foot? And you notice that as you move the tibula, the tibula, <laughs> yeah, move that. <laughs> as you move the tibia, it's interesting. Does the pressure move from the heel to the forefoot or the forefoot to the heel? And when you lift the inner edge of the foot, what direction does it move? Does it move from the forefoot to the heel or the heel to the forefoot? What direction does it move over the floor? It's funny. It's funny these movements have these relationships with the floor. And the more specific and clear we are in these relationships, the higher level of specificity we'll have in where we find support for ourselves. Great. Now, please make it so that you lift the inner edge and then the outer edge. Go back and forth, exploring with your fingers the fibula, exploring with your fingers the tibial plateau. Sometimes it's your foot that moves your leg. Sometimes you make the movement with your hand to invite the movement. Please take this exploration now to your other leg so that you can lift the outer edge of your left foot. You can do it lying if you want to. You can do it sitting in whatever way you want to make the exploration to lift the outer edge of your foot. It leaves the metatarsal head of the little toe and the heel on the ground. And again, you begin to listen to this relationship between the bones of your lower leg, the fibula, the tibia, the way that the your ankle moves underneath your lower leg. And the distinction that you can make of initiating the movement with your hands, you can start the initiation above, you can start the initiation below, and very gradually you can get to the place where you sense your foot and your lower leg, you can sense the activity of both bones, the image begins to become a little bit more clear of the potential between them. Leave it, please. Rest.
And as you're lying on your back, lift the outer edge of your left foot. Lift the inner edge of your left foot. Go back and forth between lifting the inner edge and the outer edge. As you lift the outer edge, you can sense a pressure that moves across underneath your metatarsal heads. It moves in one, it moves in a direction. As you lift the inner edge of your foot, how does that pressure under the metatarsal heads change? Can you imagine within yourself what the metatarsals themselves are doing as you rotate, as you lift the inner edge and the outer edge? If you could look along the length of the metatarsal heads with a kind of an x-ray vision, in what way are the metatarsal heads turning? Bend both knees, excuse me, stand both feet and lift the inner edge of both feet and then the outer edge of both feet. Which one is clearer? Have the leg that's not so clear be the one that leads the movement. Have the clear leg be the one that follows. I've been doing this lesson for 20 years and my, le my legs still stutter from one point to the next. How about you? Is it kind of ratching in across there a little bit? Please lift the inner edge of one and the outer of the other. and change to the opposite. What are your lips doing? <laughs> What's happening? What's happening with your tongue? Can you find your eyes following the movement? <laughs> we could be obscene. Take, move your eyes in the opposite direction. Right <laughs> Leave it from rest. So you can tune in now to the way that you can experience your legs as a part of your of yourself, the way that you your hands and your legs know each other, and the way that you know the floor under your feet. Please bend your right knee and bring it to standing, your right foot to standing. And please place the outer edge of your left foot between your right heel and your right buttocks so that your left knee is toward the floor. And so it's as if the, your right foot is standing and you place the outer edge of your left foot between your right heel 
in your right buttocks so that your toes point towards your heel. Your left heel is between your right heel and your right buttocks. The outer edge of your left foot is between your outer edge of your left foot, the other left foot, the left foot that's, your right foot is standing, and then put the left foot on the side and place it between your heel and your buttocks of your right foot. So that more or less, your toes are pointing downward in the direction of your right foot. And then place your right, place your right foot on the inner edge of your left foot. So that your right heel rests on your left heel. And your middle toe rests on the big toe. So that you make sure that your heels are touching. And you make sure that the inner part, the middle part of your right foot is resting on the metatarsal head of your left big toe. So that your right foot is resting on the inner edge of your left foot. Not on the floor. How do you know when your foot is on the floor? And how do you know the difference between having your foot standing on the floor and standing on your foot? It's a funny kind of a question, isn't it? <laughs> now, with your, with your right foot standing on the inside of your left foot, it's not so that the sole of your foot is touching. It's on the in, inside. You have to lift your right foot off the floor. <laughs> okay. So now, please begin to lower your right knee to the floor to the right by lifting the inner edge of your right foot. Lift the inner edge of your right foot to initiate the movement to take your knee to the floor to the right. Your left foot stays, hey, wait, 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 wait. your left knee stays. <laughs> it's just your, you initiate this internal, this lifting of the inner arch of your, of your right foot so that you, it invites your right knee to move toward the floor to the right. And then you lift the outer edge of your right foot to bring it back to standing over your left foot. So you play back and forth between lifting the inner edge of your foot and the outer edge of your foot. Great. Please once again stand your right foot on the floor and lift the inner edge and the outer edge of your right foot. Stand your right foot on the floor and lift the inner edge and the outer edge of your right foot so that you can follow the, within the way that this invites your knee to move and what something that begins to transpire in the way that your femur rests and moves within the within your hip joint. Now please leave this and stand your left foot and place your right foot between your left heel and your left buttocks and then place your left foot on top of the inner edge of your right foot. And lift the inner edge of your left foot so that you can lower your knee to the floor. 
then lift the outer edge of your left foot to bring it back to standing. Well, we're going to make the possible impossible possible. <laughs> the inner edge lifts and your knee moves outward and the outer edge lifts and your knee moves back to standing. Again, with your foot touching your other foot, you have another level of feedback. And if you watch carefully, the way that your foot moves, doesn't it also create a, a kind of a pressure that moves the lower, moves your right foot a little bit as well? As you lift the inner edge of your left foot, what happens to the inner edge of your right foot as you make this movement? Please stand your left foot on the floor and lift the inner edge and outer edge. Please stand both feet and lift the inner edge and outer edge. And find as you lift the inner edge and the outer edge, where exactly, where exactly, so that your foot is not rolled too far out, it's not rolled too far in, where exactly do you find the floor in such a way that you could make the initial movement of lifting your pelvis away from the floor? Where exactly? It's not a question of where you're, you sense the weight. If your weight's too far inward, you sense the weight. If the weight is, if your foot is rolled too far outward, you take a moment and sense the weight. Where exactly would you place your foot underneath your lower leg, under your right leg and left leg, that gives you the absolute clearest sense that the moment you lift, There's a particular kind of resonance, a particular kind of clarity when you find it. And again, you can ask, as you begin to lift, do you increase the weight in your feet? Or are you lifting away from your feet? Which lift invites you to lengthen through your spine? Maybe both. Please come to sitting. Place the soles of your feet together. Now, it's oftentimes said, lean on your hands, which basically means expect the floor to support you. How will you touch the floor in such a way that you're still lifted away from the floor? That your hand is just as available to lift? Because if you're leaning on it, then you're going to have to unweight it somehow. How will you have the, your, the, your hands there to give you the sense that the support is given? So neurologically, you have the stability, but it's different than falling into the floor or falling into yourself. So you can play for a moment, just the sense. Now, as you find, when you find where to rest your hands on the floor, lift the inner edge of your right foot. And observe in what direction your knee moves. Whether your knee wants to lift or whether your knee wants to lower itself to the floor. You lift the inner edge away, the inner edge away from the inner edge of your left foot.
And then please lift the inner edge of your left foot away from the inner edge of your right foot. Can you sense the spiral that your lower leg makes in the direction this invites your knee to move? Please lift the inner edges of both feet so that you begin to spiral. The lower leg on the right spirals clockwise. The lower leg on your left spirals counterclockwise. And as you lift the inner edge of both feet, please lift your pelvis. Now, of course, you're going to increase the weight in your hands now, aren't you? <laughs> but it's a question of whether you lift the weight from your hands. Lift your pelvis. Lift the inner edge of your feet and lift your pelvis. Lift the inner edge of your feet and begin to slide your pelvis toward your heels. Lift your pelvis and slide it as if to sit over the top of your heels. And come back. Lift the inner edge of your feet so that your pelvis lifts as if to slide toward your heels. And then return. And of course, with this movement, you can notice whether you, your head stays on a, on a, like on a platform, and you stays with your head on the horizon, or whether or not this invites you to lift your chest and take your head back. Yes, it could be one or the other. Again, you can see what you do. And then once you see it, you can start it and stop it and make the other. Please leave it and lie back and rest. Please come for a moment onto your knees, standing on your knees. Begin to sit back toward your heels and notice as soon as you begin to sit back toward your heels, in what direction do your knees rotate? on the floor? Do they rotate inward or outward? In what direction do your knees begin to rotate? As you begin to sit back to your heels, and whatever it is that you do, please do the opposite. And notice the difference in the way that you experience. There's a particular difference in the weight of your pelvis going back. Now, as you go back, please explore lifting the inner edges of your feet as you go back. It's a very unique situation to begin to try to find what it means to lift the inner edges of your feet when they're in such an unfamiliar place for you. As you lift the inner edges of your feet, in what direction will your lower leg roll? In what direction will your heels roll? Will your heels roll outward or inward? And it's the question of not now. As you go back, and as you lift the inner edges of your feet, 
there's a particular kind of spring that begins to emerge in your hip joints. It's like you almost like you prepare yourself to return. You go down and you don't fall at all. You're ready to, it's almost like you're absolutely ready that you could hop forward, that your system. So play with what it means for you to rotate your knees outward, your lower leg outward. It's funny, in what way does your lower leg roll outward? It means your heels come together. And as your heels come together, and as you go down, you listen. It's almost like you're prepared to leap forward. And underneath yourself, somehow with your pelvis, you can fire, pop, come back up. Pop. When we were young, we used to hop out of this, jump across the floor. Yeah. Now, just find out what the difference in the weight and the preparedness for action is if you roll your knees inward. Remember, we looked at the, the way what happens when the legs roll inward to lifting the pelvis. See what happens when you roll your knees inward as to whether or not you have the same sense of availability for springing. Now, make the movement once or twice your knees rolling outward, your heels rolling together, your knees rolling a little outward, this internal sense, and it's like you reach a point and then keep the, keep the contraction, the eccentric contraction to go down and the change to the eccentric contraction and lift yourself away from the floor. And then please come again and lie on your back and rest for a moment. Bring both feet to standing and sense now the weight of your pelvis. Sense now the weight of your pelvis to lift and don't hurt the ceiling. <laughs> sense the immediacy with which you can find Initiate the movement one time by lifting the inner edges of your feet, having the change in your ankle, the change in your lower legs, the way that this relates up into your pelvis. Up. Very nice. Keep this sense within yourself as you roll and come and lift yourself away from the floor and standing. Which paradigm are you in now? The one of gravity or the one of ground force? Is there a difference in your sense of sense of now just for the moment, lift the inner edges of both feet the tiniest amount. and then lift the outer edges of both feet. And notice the difference as to when you lower and when you lift. And then for a moment, find what's just right. 
And almost when you find just right, you may also find something about this breath that we found the very first day. When do you lift to the point that your breath simply comes and goes? When do you use too much effort to interfere, where you lift too far, and your back becomes narrow or something becomes rigid? Or when you fall a little too much? It's quite a precise place. Again, the specificity with which you find the support. All right, please, leave it. Walk around and let's take a little break. Very long lesson. <laughs>